Welcome to the Bot Game Season 4 Week 3 Challenge. This is the last challenge in Bot Game Season 4, and this is the Automation Resiliency Challenge. And this is all about how do we use generative AI to provide greater resiliency for our automations. Sound good? Let's jump right in. So first off, for some basic prerequisites, we've mentioned this on all of the Bot Games challenges for this season. Um, you will need to use generative capabilities, generative AI capabilities to be able to solve this challenge. So if you're using your own control room through work or something like that, uh, you will need to download and install the OpenAI generative AI package uh, that is available on our bot store. So botstore.automationanywhere.com. Uh, you can download that, you can install it. If you are using Community Edition, this has been pre-installed for you, so nothing else to do, uh, you'll be able to do that. In addition to that, you will need access to the OpenAI um, API, so make sure you've registered for that and you have an API key because that will be a requirement for you to connect to their API and use it. All right. This is the resiliency challenge. And the deal here is that we're working for a financial, financial services company called Spacely. And they want to add all of their customer data into their SaaS based uh, CRM. Now, anytime you're using a SaaS based application, technically uh, the provider of that SaaS based application can make changes to it. So maybe they add a new field or they change the way the layout of a particular page looks. Um, the challenge here is to make sure that our automation is able to continue to enter data into this CRM in spite of some changes that may be pushed out midway through the challenge. Okay, so the real objective is to keep your automation running. We want to make sure that your bot stays stable and is able to continue entering data even if some things on the page change around a little bit. OK, so that's going to be the whole trick is stuff's going to change once you've started to enter data and you want to make sure you can keep your automation running and uh, keep it able to complete the task at hand. So as far as the rules here, I'll jump into some rules and then we'll look at the challenge page itself uh, as the locations of different fields and the page structure changes. You want to look at using generative AI to help you identify the new locations for these different objects. You must use generative AI to find those new locations, right? Are there other ways to do this? Possibly I can think of some like kind of hacky JavaScript ways that I could possibly get around some of this, but that's not how you would normally build an automation. And so what we want to get you into the habit of is thinking of how I can build automations that are more resilient than I'm building today. So if you look at the screenshot here, company name is in the top uh, left, customer ID is in the top right. If we look at the one down here, primary contact is in the top left, email address is in the top right. So you're going to see those kind of things switching around and changing as your automation is filling out the customer details and clicking add every single time. All right. So let's take a quick look at this challenge page itself. I'm going to bring that up real quick. <clears throat> so this is the challenge page. You will need to download this spreadsheet. The spreadsheet here has uh, all of the customer data that you'll need to enter in. I think there's a total of eight or so customers in that uh, spreadsheet. But you will go through here and your automation is going to fill out each piece of data here, active discount offered, non-disclosure on file, whatever that is on the uh, CSV. You can look through that and then you can hit add. Now, notice when I click add, some of the fields start to move around a bit, right? Um, it's a little more tricky than that, right? We've done some things in here to make sure that the X path or the address for that field is totally different. So when I click add, it's going to look very different than it did before. And you'll see sometimes there are static object IDs that you can trust like company name and customer ID are, uh, are reliable object IDs, but sometimes those object IDs change. And so we want to keep that in mind as we're building out our automation. And think about how you can do this as a part of your error handling. OK, big tip there. You want to try to fill this form out the right way, the normal way. But then if you detect an error, how are you going to handle that? And how are you going to make sure your automation keeps running? And how do you make sure that your automation keeps filling out this form? And that's the big trick. And that's the big thing that we're looking at with this challenge. All right, 
Let's get back here to our PowerPoint. Couple tips and tricks. Um, ChatGPT can respond in different formats. Okay, you've seen that already with the first two challenges that we did. Try writing your prompts in different ways to see how your response varies. Um, just as a, as a tip here, and actually we're gonna talk about that right here. The quality of your prompts largely determines the quality of your output. So you wanna be very specific when you're writing your prompts of exactly what you're expecting as the output and in what format, right? If you just say like, hey, return to me the DOMX path of these fields, uh, you're gonna get it in some random format, right? So make sure that you're very specific. I want this as a JSON. Here's a sample of what that JSON should look like. I want this as an XML. Here's a sample of what that XML should look like. So play around with those different options to see how you can reliably get the data back that you want. Um, with this one, automation resiliency is the big key over speed, okay? So focus on building an automation that can continue working in spite of some of these application and page changes uh, versus how absolutely fast you can go, right? It's fine, speed is great to chase after, but let's make sure you can get it working with like, hey, my bot doesn't fail, my bot's able to continue entering this data and complete the exercise without failing. That's goal number one. Then goal number two can be, uh, how do you speed that up a little bit? The last thing I'll mention here, and this can be kind of frustrating, if you're getting a 400 error, you may be sending too many characters to ChatGPT based on the tokens that you've set in your configuration, your API subscription. So think about those kind of things. Think about how you can trim down the number of characters that you're sending to ChatGPT. Not only does that help with the efficiency of the use of the API, but that can also make your requests and responses a little bit faster. So think about those things. If you are getting a 400 error, consider trimming down the number of characters that you're sending to ChatGPT. Um, and that will likely take care of that 400 issue. All right, as far as completing this one, register for Bot Game Season 4 if you want to be eligible to win some Season 4 swag. Complete the challenge and share a screenshot with the hashtag Bot Games. You can share uh, this screen, you know, the uh, well done, you completed it screen. You can share your certificate, you can share both. Some people put up videos, those are all awesome things. Sharing those tips when you put your hashtag bot games post up is another great way to engage others in the community help other people out right you probably learned something as you went through building this one so share some tips of what worked for you what helped out you don't have to give away the secret sauce of your solution but give some tips to help other people out we've seen a lot of people doing that with uh, the last two weeks of challenges and it's really great to see people like coming up with cool ideas that even we didn't think about for solving some of these challenges. So help each other out with those tips. And finally, tag three other automation developers, challenge them to complete these exercises, and uh, that will make you eligible to win limited edition bot game swag. Okay, the last thing I wanna mention, because this is the last week of bot game season four, you will be able to generate a trifecta challenge certificate. So if you have completed all three of our Bot Games Season 4 challenges using the same name and the same email, you will be able to generate a Trifecta Challenge Certificate. Claim your certificate. We have a link below so you can access uh, the link to that. We'll be sharing that this week on social media as well so other people can claim their certificate. Uh, but this proves that you have completed all three of the Bot Games challenges for our Bot Games Season 4 Gen AI edition. And this is a great way to post on social media to let people know that uh, you are truly a bot games expert. And this is also a great way to prove that you have experience building with Automation Anywhere and Generative AI in three very different use cases. So put this on social, hashtag bot games, tag us, and uh, we're going to be handing out swag as much as we can, especially for people who are completing those trifecta certificate challenges. All right, final note here before you get started. This is a forward-looking use case. So this showcases how generative AI capabilities can be integrated with Automation Anywhere. Uh, always be sure to consult your legal team before proceeding if you're using real patient customer sensitive data. This is all just our fake data, so it's fine to use. Uh, but if you do plan to use this for real production use cases, uh, consider the, uh, the impact of, of what you're doing and uh, make sure that you've talked to your legal team before proceeding. And like every emerging technology, 
you may encounter a few weird hiccups or wonky things with this generative AI challenge. And so part of the challenge is learning how to roll with it, write better prompts, improve the way that we're building bots. I think this will be a fun way for all of you to consider how you might add resiliency into future automations in spite of application changes. Okay, so super excited for you to get started with this one. The link is in the description below. Let me know how it goes. Tag us on social. Use hashtag bot games when you complete it. We want to celebrate with you. I'll be back later this week for a solution tutorial. Super excited to see how you do with this one. I'm Micah Smith. Go be great.